because two men enter. One man leaves, two men enter. One man leaves, two men enter. One man leaves, two men enter. One man leaves. Nah, he's a warrior man. He's battling. He's banged up. He's taking shots. They're a physical team. Uh, so, you know, that's, you're going to have to gut it out. Yeah, you guys can see, he's free to talk amongst the best players in the state. Big stages, he does it every time. It makes incredible catches, pro plays, strips a guy on the kickoff. Yeah, God does it all. East, West, keep the office hot, I'll toss you with them choppers. West side, how we rock it, pull up all you get the pop it. Hey, them boy don't want no smoke. Them boy don't want no smoke. East, West, keep the office hot, I'll toss you with them choppers. West side, how we rock it, pull up all you get the pop it. Hey, them boy don't want no smoke. Man, them boy don't want no smoke. Them boy don't want no smoke. It's the night every high school team in West Virginia plays for. The beginning of the state high school playoffs. And tonight at East West Stadium in Fairmont, it all gets underway. It's going to be the number two Fairmont Senior Polar Bears facing off against the number 15 Wayne Pioneers. Fairmont Senior comes into the game with a record of seven wins and two losses. Wayne comes in at six and four. These two teams have met twice in their history and both times in the postseason. The Polar Bears won the last game. The Pioneers won the first one. It's Wayne and Fairmont Senior in round one of the AA playoffs. Now let's meet the players. Brody Whitehair, number four, senior. Dylan Hours, number five, senior. Demonte Johnson, eight, junior. Chris Wilson, 21, junior. Max Rosero, number 40, junior. Cannon Dingen, 10, junior. J1 Jones, number 11, junior. Logan Canfield, number two, junior. Gavin Michael, number 14, senior. Riley Green, number 72, senior. Joseph Richmond, number 61, senior. Caleb Barbergas, 50, junior. Trevor Bigelow, number 55, junior. Zareen Lister, number 68, junior. Caleb Angelon, number 57, senior. Love Cool Kalkini, 65, junior. Luke Abrazino, number 33, senior. Aaron Boda, number three, sophomore. Xavier Thorne, number 81, senior class. Jordan Wagner, number one, Here's our seven and two, Wayne is six and four. Their head coach is Tom Harmon, and he's a legend at Wayne. He's won three state titles, he's won 72% of his games, and he told me he hopes his team is ready for tonight. You know, we, we have played some uh, decent teams this year, but uh, uh, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, we didn't follow through on those games and win those games either. So uh, we did have some tough games that we lost close and, um, you know, we play in a tough conference. But uh, this time of the year, it really don't matter a whole lot. We all play 10 games. We all get a seed and you get in and uh, everybody's got the same record right now. But uh, the big thing with us is uh, we have improved a little bit over the year. Not, we just don't know if that had to do with our opponents or uh, us just getting better. You're known for your offense and your wing T offense. What makes it as good as it's been? Well, I think probably the the big thing is this consistency. Uh, you know, this is my 27th year at Wayne, and <clears throat> we've had a system that uh, we've had in place for for a good while, and we've had to tweak it through the years and do some different things here and there. But I, I think probably. Uh, just like any good program around the states, the familiarity the kids have with it. I mean, we're not built on, uh, you know, tremendous athletes every year, but uh, our kids are disciplined and know what they're doing, and uh, generally that pays off in good games. Tell me your impressions of this Fairmont team. I just, you know, if you were going to sit down and uh, draw up, uh, I want this kid to be this height and this weight at each position, uh, you know, Fairmont – Fairmont's got that, and that's nothing new here. Uh, everybody kind of, kind of knows that. Uh, but you know, just the playmaking ability they have on the outside, <clears throat> size they have up front, and and uh, as usual, you know, they're a very well coached team. They know what they want to do and uh, uh, fly the ball and play hard. So that's a tough combo. What worries you the most? I would say just the sheer uh, athleticism and uh, their their ability to be balanced and run the ball well and throw the ball well. It gives 
all coaches uh, uh, headache uh, defensively uh, sound and, and always and uh, just you know when they pack the box us being able to, to make them pay for doing that uh, you know you got to execute that's Tom Harmon the head coach of the Wayne Pioneers and J.O. you had the opportunity not only to see this Wayne team but to coach against uh, Tom Harmon and Wayne back in 20 and 14 what kind of a coach is he what kind of a team do you expect to see tonight Oh, as for Tom, Tom is, uh, you know, he's a top top shelf uh, football coach. You know, he's been there 27 years. Um, I've probably known him for 15. Um, great program down there at Wayne. Uh, we're, tonight we're going to see offensively what they like to call the Wayne T. Uh, we'll play on the Wayne T. We're going to see some tight formations with them. They don't really don't try to spread the field. Uh, we're going to see some traps, um, uh, power. We'll see some uh, wing, you know, um, we used to call them crisscross counters, but it'll be with the wing coming back across the formation, carrying the ball. Uh, defensively, we're going to see a 3-4, cover three. It may look like a cover two to people in the stands, but well, trust me, one of those safeties is in getting ready to invert down in the box. So Wayne presents some problems for the Polar Bears tonight, and one of the players who will play a key role for Fairmont tonight is Damani Johnson, who was the player of the game last week in the East-West matchup, and I checked in with him yesterday to get an idea of what his thoughts were about last week and how it prepares him for tonight's matchup. Yeah, we was always ready to play. Um, we know what kind of game that was going to be, a big rivalry game, so we know what we had to do, and we just came out and we executed perfectly. This is first round of the playoffs now. You're playing a team that you don't know too much about other than what you've seen on video. And what have you seen about this Wayne team? Well, they run a lot of um, wing T and misdirection. So we just got to make sure that we're making tackles and um, not letting them move to the second level easy. And how about your role defensively? What do you see? What are you going to see from Wayne tonight? Uh, I just got to make sure that I step up and make tackles. And if they leak out a receiver, I just got to make sure I play them in and get the stop. That's Damani Johnson of the Polar Bears, who is ready for this matchup tonight with the Wayne Pioneers. And, uh, J.L., what makes the wing tee so difficult to defend? That's yeah, just, you know, the, the number one is the misdirections. Um, you know, if you, if you rely on reading the backs, um, as some defenses do, that you're going to be out of position automatically. Um, normally... The guards will take you to where the ball's at. Um, it's just for game, it, for the it's smoking, smoking mirrors, seven, but uh, Wayne's pretty good at doing it. So uh, Colton, Mathis, we hope that uh, eight, we've got a good week of practice, James and Martin, and we've seen it throughout. We've seen Wing T throughout there Jackson, throughout the season, so it's, it's nothing new to us. It's just uh, this team's going to be one of the better ones at running it against us. Certainly, Morgantown, uh, another Wing T team, certainly with a lot of athletes and a little bigger front line than you'll see from this Wayne team. How important is the offensive line in a Wayne T offense? You know, you don't have to be overly big. I mean, a lot of, a lot of team times people go to it just because of the, uh, and you can run it uh, particularly well with smaller linemen. Um, you know, we're just going to have to see, Jeff, and, you know, if we, if we can get our backers and our linemen to uh, you know, stay in their gaps, play their gaps, We'll be all right tonight, but it's it's going to be it's we're going to have our hands full tonight. You know, and people might think it's a 15 versus two, but uh, it's two good football teams. Well, the Polar Bears have won the coin toss and elected to receive. And you take a look at the stats, and this Fairmont team in the first quarter has outscored its opponents 119 to seven. So you can see why. Yeah, we want to get the football first and. That is the strategy. The Polar Bears, I can't recall one time when they've won the toss when they have elected to defer. So they want the ball first and try to set the tone of the game as they did last week in that East-West matchup. <laughs> Mentioned that Tom Harmon is in his 27th year as head coach of the Pioneers. Three state championships, and he had won back-to-back -back titles just prior to the Polar Bears playing uh, the Pioneers several years ago. His all-time record, 227 wins and 90 defeats. He has spent virtually his entire coaching career at Wayne High School. On the other side is polar bear coach Nick Bardick, who's in his seventh season. He has already equaled Harmon's total for state championships with three. His overall record, 72 and 14. 
All in all, he is 1-0 and against Wayne. Pioneers 6-4 and this season. The teams they've beaten have an overall record of 16-44, and while the teams they've lost to are 32-9. and So it's almost like the teams they lost to were really good and the teams they beat were really bad. And if you go back and look, Jeff, I mean, uh, the four games they lost was I think maybe the most was by 10 points. So they All close games. Yeah. And here is the opening kickoff, and the Polar Bears, Canfield, gets it at the 18. There's the flip to Hours going the other way. He gets up to the 30, the 35. He's up at the 40 and gets near midfield and is run out of bounds at about the 50-yard line. Canfield took the kickoff, and then he flipped it to Hours coming around to the left side, and Dylan went down the far sidelines in front of the Polar Bear bench and went out of bounds at about midfield. Yeah, you can tell, you know, all season long we've had great uh, – Great play out of our special teams, and when you're allowed, when you're we're able to do that, you're able to put in plays like that. So, hats off to the blue there. So the Polar Bears come out now with three receivers to the right side: Dinger, Canfield, and Hours. Jones will be up on the left side. They're showing two safeties. They're they're cover three. The ball at the 49 in Wayne territory, and here's Whitehair on a keeper, a design keeper, and he takes the ball to the sidelines and then is run out of bounds on the far side of the field. And it'll be enough for a Fairmont first down as he goes out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Yeah, kudos to our offensive line. We got a great push there off the first play of the game. And Brody just ran Resaw Green. Now they set it back at the 35 where it will be first and 10 Fairmont Senior. Two receivers on either side. And quarterback White here. Now I see a third to the right side because the backfield is empty. Hey, Jeff, you see how their corners got their backs to the line, the out-of-bounds line? Yes. That's cover three. They're, and not, they're not tipping. They're White here to pass down the middle, and the pass is incomplete intended for Canfield. There number were defenders four, in the area. Kind of a scary two, pass Canfield. that falls incomplete. Broke up by number 15. Yeah, they're not Canfield. trying to hide anything. Off, off, you know, they take your corners and they box them in with their backs to the, to the out-of-bounds. That's, that's automatic three. Um, we had good, good pass protection on that play. We just missed our receiver. So second down and 10, Fairmont Senior with the ball at the Wayne 35-yard line. <coughs> Wayne gives up an average of about 16 points a game this season and scores an average of 33. Second and 10 for the Polar Bears now. Johnson enters the game. He's behind the quarterback, Whitehair. And Johnson gets the handoff. He's trying to get outside to the right and is grabbed and brought down at about Number the 34-yard line. You only get about a yard on the play. Brought down by number 15. Making the tackle for Wayne was and Zane Adkins. And it'll be third down and nine for the Polar Bears. Good play by the young man. We didn't have a hat on him. So the Polar Bears be looking to go to the air now. They are in four down territory. It's third down and nine with the football in the center of the field as the Polar Bears go from left to right at the 34-yard line. Jones wide to the left side. Three receivers to the right. Quarterback White here. Back to pass, rolling to the near side. Now running with it inside the 35, the 30, and run out of bounds inside the 30 yard line. They're Number going to mark him out at about the 27 28. It's yeah. going to be short of the first down by two or three yards, and it's going to bring up a fourth down for the Polar Bears. Be fourth down. Fourth and three. Yeah, Brody just took off on his own there. Protection was good. Yeah, this is two down territory to begin with. Nick wasn't looking to get it all in one shot, so. Now it's fourth down and three. The Polar Bears need to get to the 25 for a first down. Whitehair brings his team out. Pistol formation, he has Johnson behind him, and he has three receivers to the left, one Dylan Hours to the right. And Brody back to pass, sends it to the middle of the field, and it's incomplete, intended for Canfield. And the Polar Bears are stopped on their first possession of the night, and Wayne takes over with 10.42 to go in the first quarter. It was a, it was a good play, just not, not well executed, though. No protections there. Yeah, just thrown behind yeah, just Canfield. Behind. And the Polar Bears on defense. Pioneers come out. Quarterback is a junior. His name is Fisher Fry. And he is rolling to the right side. Throws on the run, and the pass is overthrown 
at about the 39 yard line. It was intended for Ronnie Staler. He's their leading receiver. Yeah, Pioneers went with the rollout to the right. And he tried to get the guy in the flat and just overthrew him. Just, they run a lot of two man routes, Jeff. Um, you may see a three man route, but mainly they, they like to run two man routes. And Staley is their leading receiver this season. He's caught a total of 25 passes. It's yeah. second down and 10 from the Wayne 28. And timeout called at the line of scrimmage. Timeout called by the Pioneers. 10.37 to go first quarter from Fairmont. It's the Polar Bears nothing. Wayne nothing on fun. 93-1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that Golden Blue Pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Wayne and Fairmont Sr., first quarter of this first round matchup. The Pioneers have the football after stopping the Polar Bears on Fairmont's first possession. In the backfield for Wayne, their tailback is Colton Mathis. He's their leading rusher, but their big guy, their fullback, is Jackson Dameron, 5'11", 220, and he can be a load to bring down. It's second down and 10 for the Pioneers. Quarterback on a keeper off the left side, and he's got running room out over the 40, up to the 45 and near midfield. And a quarterback runs it, and he takes the ball into Polar Bear territory at the 49. Yeah, what they ran there was just quarterback uh, power. They're going to pull the backside guard and tackle, and the quarterback's going to fall right through the hole. Now this is the Wayne T. And this is what Wayne does. So uh, both teams have come out trying to do what they do best, and the Pioneers have the ball in Polar Bear territory now. First down number one. And it's first and 10 at the Fairmont 49. The clock at 10.05 here in the first quarter, no score. They send a wide out to the near side, wing back to the right. He comes in motion, fake to him, and the handoff goes to Mathis, and Mathis stretches down to the 45. Hours grabs him by the ankles and brings him down, but it, it's a four-yard game Colton for Mathis, Colton Mathis. Here. Yeah, they faked the jet. <laughs> here it is. They faked the jet, they faked the fullback, and they handed it to the, the uh, tailback. Um, we used to call it like a 42 counter, but uh, as you can see, everything's quick hitting. Second down and six now from the Fairmont 45. Wing back set up to the left side. Handoff goes to the big back. That's Dameron, and Dameron has a big hole inside the 40 down to the 36-yard line. Max Bracero brings him down, but it's going to be a nine-yard gain and another first down for the Pioneers. Yeah, that's the, that's the tight end weak side. We used to call that uh, down, so it would be like 46 down. Um, it's with a fullback. Well, the Pioneers have taken the football from their 28 to the Polar Bear 36 now, and it's first down and 10. Ball on the far left hash marks. They have a wide out to the right, and there's a fumble, fumble. on the exchange, and the quarterback falls on it back fumble at about the... 37-yard line. Recovery by number 12, Fisher Fry. Yeah, it's a, you know, it being cold out, that ball, it's, it doesn't feel like it does back when back in September. Just popped out, but to the benefit of the quarterback, it popped out right in front of him. He's quick-minded enough to jump on it. So now it's going to be second and 11. 8.20 to go in the first quarter, no score. In motion, the wing back, fake to him, quarterback back to throw, rolling to the right side, has time, off balance, throw downfield, and it's intercepted. Cannon Dinger at the 12, he's up to the 15, the 20, coming to the near side, he gets up to the 25, he's at the 30, the 35, and stumbles down at about the 37 yard line, and the Polar Bears have the ball. Yeah, that was a well underthrown pass. 
Um, we're lucky the quarterback didn't keep it and take off and keep running because he had the edge. First and 10 from the 36 yard line. Yeah, Dinger's been doing that all year for us. Is that number seven? Cannon Dinger, seventh interception this season. He's had three in one game before, and he gets off to a good start now. The Polar Bears have the ball, eight minutes to go. We're in the first quarter. First down 10, Fairmont at its own 37. Handoff, fake handoff, pass downfield to Canfield, catches it up at the 42, and then is hit hard and brought down. But he does have a nice game for the Polar Bears. He's going to get about four, maybe five yards on the play. Yeah, that was a nice play action. We, we ran the uh, power off, or the counter. We ran the counter up front and, 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 threw the, and, and threw the hitch. Canfield gets five. It's going to be second down and five for Fairmont. So the first completed pass for Brody Whitehair tonight. He's now one for three. Ball at the Polar Bear 42, moving from left to right. No score in this game. We're in the first quarter. Whitehair. Gives it off to Johnson, and Johnson crashes into the center of the Number line and Johnson takes it up to about carry. the 45. You'll get a couple of yards on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down and two, give him a gain of three. Yeah, we, we just didn't stay hat on a hat that time. Usually, you, if our offensive line will stay hat to the second level, uh, I'll give it, uh, that'll be good for us, but that play there, we just didn't. Now it's third down and two at the Fairmont. 45-yard line. Three receivers left. Whitehair back to pass. Looks, yeah. looks. Has yeah. lots of time. Yeah. Now running yeah. to this sideline. He'll get up to the 45 and close to the first down. Let's see where the Number mark is put out of bounds. He needed to get to the 47, and that's right about where the officials are setting the ball down. Right at the 47, and they have signaled it is a Fairmont senior first down. Yeah, Brody had plenty of time. You know, just, uh, well, good coverage by Wayne down the field, and, and he just had to go and run and see what he could get, and he got us a first. So first down 10, Fairmont senior at its own 47-yard line. White hair to pass. Quick pass far side, caught by Dinger at the 45. He gets the 50 down to the 45 and close to the 41-yard line. He's brought down there, but it is another polar bear first down. Great blocking on the edge, edges Back by our wideouts there. Fry. The play will be a polar bear first down. So Dinger gets 12 yards on that reception, and the polar bears in business now in Wayne territory at the 41-yard line, first down and 10. On the far hash marks, Fairmont moves from left to right. Royal blue uniforms, pants and jerseys, white helmets. And white air back to pass. Now lofting one downfield. The pass is incomplete along the sidelines intended for Dylan Hours. But he was well defended along the sidelines, and it's going to be second down and 10. It was a well-placed ball. Again, the pass protection's held up. Our guys are doing fine. Hand on the hat. Feet are moving. He just put, he put some air on it. It was nice. There's was Nelson on the pass. Dylan's already out of bounds. Second down and 10 now. The bulk of the Polar Bear success has come on the ground and with white hair running the ball and through the air with white hair throwing it. And there is the handoff. It goes to Johnson trying to break it to the outside. He gets back to the line of scrimmage and more. The 40, the 35, and down to about the 31-yard line. Uh -oh. And did he fumble the ball? And he did. And the Pioneers take over. Yeah. You don't get a video review in high school. Now, nope, trying to run counter. You let a guy bleed, in, bleed out on the edge, so he Being had to cut it to the outside. To the 31-yard line. Makes a nice run to the very end. Yeah, it was out. So, Polar Bear turnover. And the Pioneers have it. First down and 10. So, back-to-back -back turnovers. And Wayne has the football. There is a deep handoff to Mathis. He gets away from Boda, and he's hit along the sidelines and goes out of bounds. But he'll get much more than he should have. Yeah, they're on the run trap. Oh, Boda had him in the backfield. It'll be a seven-yard gain for Mathis on that play. Yeah, Boda could have made a nice play in the backfield. So the Pioneers with the ball at their own 39-yard line. An interception and a fumble. And uh, these two teams have exchanged turnovers. Wayne has it back, 5.49 to go here in the first quarter. 
There is the fake to the wing back, and there's a handoff to the running back who is smothered at the line of scrimmage. There was no place to go, and the Polar Bears converged very quickly on Mathis that time. That's exactly how you play counter. Tackled by number five, Dylan Hour. No gain. Brings up a third down. Third down, and about three yards to go for the Pioneers at their own 38-yard line. Clock down to 5.20. First quarter, no score. Fairmont Senior and Wayne. The Pioneers have a 338-pound center, and he gets over the ball now. And there's the handoff to Dameron, and Dameron, their big back, rumbles forward for the first down up to the 42-yard line. Yeah. 48, Dameron, the ball Running the fullback. First down, Wayne. So, Depends on how you call it. Some, some, if it's to the strong side, it, it's uh, down. It's to the weak side, it's belly. But it's you know, it's dive. It's just a simple dive by the fullback. And he's he looks like he's a little horse to bring down. He's had a successful season for the Pioneers, and this is the first year he's really had that kind of success. First down, ten. Wayne at the Pioneer forty-two. And there is quarterback faking it, running to the right side, trying to get the corner, and he gets to the sidelines and is run out of bounds by Cannon Dinger, but he gets well, much five, too much there. yardage if you're a Polar Bear fan. Run it's going to be run there. out of bounds at about the 49-yard line, and that's going to be a gain of about seven yards on the play. Yeah, they ran this play earlier. This is quarterback counter. Fry is the leading rusher for the Pioneers now. Three carries, 29 yards, and it's second down and three. Spread out the formation a little bit now with two receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback out of the pistol is rolling to the near side to pass, getting some pressure as he runs to the near side. Now he's going to run with it, push towards the sidelines and out of bounds, very close to the Come first down the at the 48-yard line. Run out of bounds by number two, Logan Canfield. Yeah. Now that was a three-man route. But again, you know, the quarterback rolled to his left. He's looking for the out or the deep ball. And they signal first down for Wayne. That'll be a first down. And that'll be their fourth first down of the night. All have been on the ground. And now the ball is in Polar Bear territory at the 48-yard line. The Pioneers were here on their last possession, but through an interception. First down and 10. Quarterback on another keeper. Gets it right up the middle this time, and Boda has a hold of him, but he breaks free and takes it down close to the 41. It's going to get about seven yards well, on the play, the and the here. quarterback is, he's averaging about nice seven yards a carry five, now yeah, Just for the Pioneers. Just run that little quarterback counter to pull him, pull him the backside guards and backside guard and tackle. Polar Bear front line. Bigelow, Bracero, and Arbogast digging in. Outside linebackers, Dakota Nisley and Taryn Boda. There's the handoff to Mathis up the middle. Mathis is spun around and goes down inside the 40 at about the 38-yard line. Mathis, Very here. close to a first down for Wayne. Yeah. Going to be one. short by yeah, about a yard. This one here was just a simple Nisley. trap. And we, Oxford, we played it well. So it's third down and one. Wayne with the ball as the clock turns inside. Three minutes to go in the opening quarter. A first playoff game. A number two seed, Fairmont Senior, against the number 15, Wayne Pioneers. Quarterback comes up under center on this short yardage play, and he gives it to Mathis, and Mathis breaks free inside the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. He's into the end zone, and the Pioneers have scored. It'll be a 38-yard run for Holton Mathis, and Wayne takes a 6 to nothing lead. Yeah, a misdirection, a misdirection counter will get you. We had guys in the position to make the play. Just We're not believing what we're seeing. The holder, number 18, James Spraglin, the kicker. Zero. Cade Estep to attempt the extra point for the Pioneers, and it is up and good. 2.38 to go, first quarter from Fairmont. It's Wayne 7, the Polar Bears nothing on Fun 93-1.
City National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Obviously, the Polar Bears have outscored their opponents 119 to 7 in the first quarter. So thinking that the Polar Bears are used to being behind in the first quarter, well, that's not very likely. And now they are in that situation, though, as Wayne will kick off with a 7-0 lead. And here is the line drive kick that is going to be scooped up at the 32-yard line by Johnson, heads towards the sidelines and gets up to the 40 and run out of bounds. Over the 40-yard line, Johnson on the return. see where they mark him at about the 43. You know, it was a nice play by Johnson because, you know, that, that football doesn't bounce like a basketball or, or roll like a baseball. I mean, that was Colonel a nice, start first and 10 nice play, and he got what he could line. get out of it. You know, anytime you start midfield on first, you know, on possession, it's good for you, Jeff. And that's what happened on the first when the Polar Bears started at the 50, and now this one they're going to start at the 44. Switch out of football. Start trading balls. And they set it down at the 44. Polar Bears, first and 10, down 7 0, 230 to go here in the first quarter. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Quarterback Whitehair has hours behind him. Jones comes in motion. Handoff goes to Dillon, tries to get outside to the left, and he'll get up to about the 50 and then down inside the 50 to the 49. Five, so he's going to get good yardage on first down. He'll get about seven yards on the play, and it'll be second down and three. Yeah, we're using, you know, the jet motion and then, you know, zone back with Dillon. It's like split flow. Um, it, was, it was a good play. I mean, anytime you can get... It's what, six yards of carry? Seven? It'll be second and three from the Wayne 49 yard line. Dinger and Jones are wide outs to the left. Canfield and Johnson are wide right. And there is Dylan Hours getting the handoff again. He gets down to the 45 yard line and then dives close to the 41. And it'll be a polar bear first down. And it'll be an eight yard gain for Dylan Hours. So Dillon's carried the ball twice, 15 yards. And the Polar Bears get their fourth first down of the night. Good blocking by the O-line. Um, you know, wish Dinger would have positioned himself on the inside, the inside peck instead of the outside. <clears throat> first down and 10 from the Wayne, 41. Clock down to a minute 20 here in the first quarter. Whitehair takes the snap. He wants to throw. Throws it downfield on the pass. Ooh. Here it is. Caught beautifully by Dinger inside the 10, the 5, and he's into the end zone. It's a polar bear touchdown. A 41-yard TD pass from Whitehair to Dinger, and the polar bears trail 7-6. to six. I think Canfield may have tipped that. Yeah. Good protection. Yeah. You have to give Canfield the assist. The assist. He was trying to, Brody was trying to hit Canfield on the, uh, on the, on the, on the slant. And he tipped it to the deep slant. Cam Peschel to attempt the extra point. The kick is up and the kick is good. So the Polar Bears answer and answer quickly. 108 to go. First quarter from Fairmont. It's the Polar Bears 7. Wayne 7 on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand. With favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. 
seven, Lincoln, zero. Independence, seven, Rome County, zero. And Weir, seven, Frankfurt, zero. Cannon Dinger catches everything in his area and sometimes passes that aren't. And he gets that one on a deflection and scores, and the Polar Bears have tied it. Here is the kickoff from Peschel. It's short, bounces at the 20, oh. takes a high hop, and it's picked up at the 20-yard line, and that's it. Great, great coverage by our kickoff. So the number Polar Bears six, handled Jared that one Perry very well. Return. Jared Perry was on the return right now, for one, Wayne, but he Wagner, just had the chance Perry to catch Perry. the high hop, and that was it. Three and Polar Bears there the on top of him. The Wayne, 18-yard line. Set down at about the 18. But we've gotten play like that from our special teams all year. So now, let's see how Wayne can answer. We've got a minute three to go in the first quarter. The Pioneers have just a couple of minutes ago scored to take an early lead, and the Polar Bears have tied it now. First down and 10 at the 18, and there is the handoff on the sweep coming this way. It comes to Hayton, and Hayton gets up to the 25-yard line, and that's all. Number two, Caden Hayton, yeah, they're the ball in. carrier. Ran jet sweep to the to, to their left. Knocked out of bounds by number 10, Cannon Dinger. I think they missed a hole here on our number five. But yeah, I, I heard the fans below me yeah. hold, yelling hold, and you also yeah. thought you saw one, but the important guys didn't see it that way, yeah. and it's a six-yard gain on that run by Hayton. And it's going to be second down and four. The ball is set down at the 25-yard line. East step is a wide out to the near side for Wayne. Wing back to the right. There is Jackson Dameron carrying the football. He gets to the 30, the 35, and up to the 38-yard line. Took a few Dameron polar bears to bring him down. White here and Dinger in on the stop for the polar bears. The play will be a first down yeah, they're just lead. they're leading up with the wing and the tailback and just giving it to the fullback. 13-yard run. Wayne gets its sixth first down of the night. All of them on the ground. Inside 25 seconds to go. The Pioneers have to get a playoff though, as the play clock's down to five. First down play, handoff to Mathis. Mathis bottled up at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to get about two, and that's it. Up to about the 40. Dakota Nisley was Ball one of the first to meet him. It'll be Mathis. a gain of two. Second and eight coming up, Brought but that's the end of the first quarter. From East West Nisley. Stadium in Number Fairmont, we played one quarter. First round playoff action. It's Fairmont Senior 7, Wayne 7 on fun 93 score, one. Score, Fairmont Senior 7, Wayne 7. Get help. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of blue pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. You see future polar bear, also known as the Burger King, Cole Sammons. Wish him a happy 14th birthday. One quarter in the books from East West Stadium in Fairmont, and we have a tie game. It's 7-7. Wayne has the football. It's second down and eight at the Pioneer 40. They're moving now from left to right in those black and white uniforms with black helmets. Their quarterback up under center. There's Dameron getting the handoff, and Dameron lowers his head and takes it to about the 45-yard line where he is hit and brought down, down by Dylan Hours. It'll be third down and three coming up and for three, Wayne. Karen Boda. 
Yeah, they're just running the old down play on wing T. We haven't, you know, we haven't been stopping it at the point of attack. So now it's third down and three for the Pioneers at their own 45. Wing back to the right side, handoff goes to Mathis, bumping it to the outside. He'll get the first down up to about the 50-yard line. Dinger Mathis makes the tackle the for the Polar Bears, but it's another five-yard gain three, and a first photo, down. Number 10, Dinger. First down, Wayne. Yeah. Just a little counter, bringing, bringing, the, you know, bringing the ball back to their side. Line. So it's on the near hash marks. And the Pioneers look at a first down and 10. They send two receivers to the left. They've only thrown two passes, one intercepted, and the quarterback on a keeper. This time gets it off the right side, and he stopped for a five-yard gain, which for the Polar Bears is a little better than they've been doing, but still too much on first down. Yeah, this is about the fourth or fifth time they've ran this quarterback counter. And Fairmont hasn't stopped it yet. No. He's run for 23, 7, 3, 7, and 5. And it's second down and 5 now at the Fairmont 45. Well, the Pioneers in polar bear territory each time they've had the football. And the quarterback hands it right up the middle to Dameron, and Dameron takes defenders with him inside the 40 down to about the 39-yard line. He was brought down by Taron Moda, but... He'll get a first down three, for the Bowden. Pioneers down to the 39. First down, Wayne. Yeah, this ran trapped. He has 32 yards rushing tonight on six, on four carries. And the thing about this offense, it'll suck the time off the clock. Down inside 10 minutes here in the second quarter. And there is a hit on Mathis in the backfield by Canfield, but Mathis gets free and takes it back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a gain of a yard. 17, the ball carrier. Mathis appeared to be stopped for a big loss right by now, Logan Canfield, but he struggled free and gained a yard. Yeah, Canfield came on a run blitz and made a nice, was making a nice play in the backfield, and the running back has kept his, his feet turning. You know, these, these backs from Wayne, they, they run hard. They may not be super fast, but they run, they run hard. So now second down and nine from the Polar Bear 38-yard line. One wide out to the near side. That's East Step. Quarterback back to pass. Fry sends it downfield. It's caught at the 35-yard line and taken down to about the 32. Pass complete to well. Staley. Pass complete. Canfield defending on the play. Set it down at the 33. Two, on a just brings up a run down Five yard pass play. And it's third down and about four yards to go. Well, the Bears could use a big stop here. Pioneers threatening to take the lead again. Wing back to the right side on this third down and four. Dameron gets the handoff, and Dameron gets four easily as he takes it inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. And another Dameron. Wayne first down. Yeah, it's just a little pull back down. First down, and, you know, that, Wayne. If, if, if you don't get a handle on it, you know, it's going to be a long night. But, you know, if you look at the clock, they've already, they've already sucked it four minutes off this clock in the second quarter. Down to 8.05 here until halftime. Game tied 7-7. Wayne with the football looking at a first and 10 at the Polar Bear 27. Fry gives it to Mathis. Mathis off the left side, and he runs hard and takes it down to about the 21-yard line. He'll get about six on the play. 17, Mathis the ball carrier. Tackle made by number 25, Dakota Nisley. Yeah. Mathis is already up to 65 yards rushing here in the first half. Second and four for the Pioneers at the Fairmont 21. Dameron gets the handoff, and Dameron stretches forward. And he'll take it down to about the 17-yard line. Canfield had him by the this ankles. Is by number two, Canfield. Yeah. You know, their backs are just turning their feet. Um, you know, 
they've only run about maybe five different types of First plays. down, Wayne. Four-yard gain, first down number nine for the Pioneers. And the ball is now at the Polar Bear 17-yard line. Fairmont Senior could use one of those timely turnovers here. Fairmont turned it over once on a fumble, and Wayne has turned it over once on an interception. There is the fake, and the quarterback on a keeper. And he gets wide to the right side and goes down towards the sidelines and out of bounds inside the 15-yard line at about the 13. He'll get four yards on the play. You know, they've run that quarterback counter. They've run trap. They've run the down. And they've run the belly. They've, they've, only, they've only run maybe four, maybe five different plays tonight. And the thing of it is, from Fairmont's standpoint, they really haven't been able to stop no. him on any of those plays. They're getting at least three, four yards a carry. Now it's second down and six from the 13. And Fry gives it right up the middle to Dameron. And this time he stopped quickly as Dylan Hours was in on the tackle. Yeah, 61. Is that uh, 48 on the Richmond, carry? Richmond did a nice job. It'll be a one-yard gain for Dameron. And third down and five coming up. Third down for Wayne. The ball at the 12-yard line. They're taking six minutes off the clock. Play clock turns down to 11 seconds as the Pioneers come to the line of scrimmage on a third down and five from the Fairmont 12-yard line. Quarterback under center, and now Wayne needs to call a timeout. Timeout Pioneers, 5.55 to go in the second quarter from East West Stadium in Fairmont. It's the Fairmont Polar Bear 7, the Wayne Pioneer 7 on Fun 93.1. National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Quarter, North Perry, 14, Lincoln, 0. Independence, 14, Rome County, 0. Frankfurt and Rear tied at 7 in the second. Winfield, 21, Lewis County, 7. And the Wayne Pioneers have 15, the football, and six. Wayne has had it First for scores, pretty much the entire second, second quarter. And Wayne has a third and five at the Polar Bear 12-yard line. They called timeout as they came to the line of scrimmage. Play clock running down. Tom Harmon gets the time, and now Pioneers come to the line of scrimmage. Richmond along the front line for the Polar Bears with Bigelow and Arbogast. Under center is the quarterback, and the handoff goes to Mathis wide to the right side. Mathis spun around inside the five, and he goes out of bounds, but he'll have enough for a Wayne first Mathis down. The ball carrier. Initial hit by number eight, Damani Johnson. Tackle by number four, Brody Whitehair. Be first and yeah. goal for Wayne. Just, uh, just ran the ball outside. Eight yard gain and a first down for the Pioneers. First down number 10 and it's first and goal from the Polar Bear four yard line. Quarterback under center and movement at the line of scrimmage and a flag is thrown. And we could have a false start coming up against the Pioneers. And it is. And that'll take the ball back to the nine. That is the first penalty of the night. So back at the nine. First down and goal. Wayne's running game has had little trouble with the Polar Bear defense tonight. They've only thrown one pass and com or completed one pass for five yards. So now at the nine, wing back to the right is Hayton, quarterback under center, wing back in motion, and there is the handoff to Mathis, and Mathis is grabbed by the jersey and goes down at about the six-yard line. That was a touchdown-saving tackle by the tackle jersey. Made by number 50, Caleb Arbogast. Two-yard gain. It was like a 40, it was like 42 counter. You did a nice job defending it there. 
Game clock down to 5.20. Play clock at 17. Polar Bears 7, Wayne 7. But the Pioneers threatening now at the Polar Bear 7-yard line. Second down and goal. Wide out is the fullback who now comes in motion from right to left. And there's a timeout called by Wayne again. There was something Tom Harmon didn't like there, and he calls his final timeout. Timeout Pioneers, 5.02 to go. Second quarter, it's Fairmont 7, Wayne 7 on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name's Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Cattle Midland 22, Musselman 16. Huntington 21, Morgantown 0 in the second. Martinsburg 13, Martinsburg South 0, that's in the first. It's not been a night for putters. Neither team has punted the football, and the Pioneers are threatening now to take the lead as they have the football at the Polar Bear 7, second down and goal. And they come out now with an empty backfield set. Fry fakes it, throws it into the end zone. The tight end is wide open for the touchdown. Spradlin catches it. Nobody near him, and he catches the ball, and the Pioneers take the lead 13-7. to Well, when you run the ball as well as they have tonight. Number 12, Fisher Fry, pass complete to number 18, James Spradlin. When they run the ball as well as they have tonight, Jeff, they're going to have plays like that, especially quick hitters wide open. So a seven-yard touchdown pass, and now the extra point attempt is up, and it is a crazy-looking kick, but it is good. Almost straight up in the air, but it makes it across the crossbar, and there's timeout on the field. 4.55 to go in the second quarter. It's Wayne, 14, Fairmont, 7 on Fun, 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design and build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Wayne takes the lead here in the second quarter with 4.55 to go. The Pioneers lead 14-7, and now we'll kick off as Estep will kick from left to right. Polar Bears creep up a little now because he hasn't been kicking the ball deep, and this is another squibber, and it is going to be scooped up at the 32-yard line, and it's scooped up by Damani yeah. Johnson. Runs wide to the right. He's at the 40, the 45, the 50. Makes uh -oh. it to the outside at the 45, and he goes down there. And the Polar Bears will go first Number and ten eight, from there with 4.46 to go in the first half. Yeah, that was a nice play by Monty. He's about one step from taking it. The one plus for the Polar Bears is each time they've had the ball on the kickoff, they've had it at pretty much midfield or better. And now they're at the Wayne 46, first down and ten, trailing 14-7. Oh, we've had good field position all night. It's been a long time since the Polar Bears have had their hands on the football, though. It's first, first and ten. In motion comes Dylan Hours. Touch pass is a bad one, but Hours manages to hold on to it. Takes it to the 45, the 40, and then runs out of bounds. Almost five, dropped that Hours, touch pass. Thank God he didn't take his eye off it. Knocked and out of bounds by number 17. He ends up getting Colton enough Mathis. for a Fairmont first down as they'll set the ball down at the 39-yard line, a 10-yard gain. Yeah, that's just that. Tavon pop pass, and good thing Dylan did not take his eyes off it, and we would have been in trouble. First and ten Polar Bears from the Wayne 39. Three receivers to the right side. 
Whitehair, long count, now looks to the sidelines. Play clock at six. Comes up to the line of scrimmage. He's going to have to hustle now. Just two seconds on the play clock. He doesn't know that. And the Polar Bears may have called timeout on the sidelines. Yeah. Timeout called with 4.39 to go here in the second quarter. Timeout Polar Bears, the score. Wayne 14, Fairmont 7 on Fun 93-1. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We have that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food. And it's first down and 10 for Fairmont Senior at the Wayne 39. Polar Bears trail 14-7. Here in the second quarter, Whitehair back to pass. Has time, now runs out of the pocket. He gets down to the 40, runs to the sidelines, and is thrown out of bounds, oh. and really thrown out of bounds. And yeah. no Number flag four, is thrown. The ball I mean, it could've, we could have easily gotten one there, a flag, but, uh, you know, the, 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 protection's, the protection's there. Sets um, the ball down at the 35, so it's a four-yard gain. Second down and six. What Wayne's doing is they're taking one of their inside backers, and they're starting to spy, spy number four. Second and six from the 35. Here's Damani Johnson. Uh-oh. In trouble in the backfield. He's going down for a big loss back at the 40-yard line. And it's going to bring up a third down and about 10 for the Polar Bears. Yeah, we had a, a missed block here by number two. Be a third down for Paramount So third down for the Polar Bears. Ball back at the 40. So it's actually third down and 11 for the Polar Bears after a six yard loss. And Whitehair has an empty backfield now. And he's back to pass. Sets up, fires it downfield to the far sidelines and the pass is caught along the sidelines and the Polar Bears have the football inside the 10 yard line. Navon Jones catches it and he has it inside the 10 for a Polar Bear first down. Yeah, again, pass protection's good. I wanna say the ball might have been tipped, Jeff, I'm not sure. It's down at the nine-yard yeah. line. It was tipped again. 31-yard pass play. And the Polar Bears have the football. First down and goal at the nine. Here is White here. He gives the ball to the left side to Johnson. Johnson gets down inside the 10, down to about the eight, and that is all. I was afraid eight, we were looking at Johnson another loss of yardage situation there, but Johnson manages to get about a yard on the play, and it'll be second down and goal. Yeah, our, our blocking on the perimeter's taking a couple steps back here since that first opening drive. Two-yard gain for Johnson, second and goal from the seven-yard line. Two receivers to the right side now for the Polar Bears, and here's White here back to pass, running to the right side, looking, looking, now throws off balance into the end zone, and it's underthrown, intended for Navon Jones, Number incomplete, four, and it'll be third 11, and goal Jones, for the Polar Bears. Yeah. Well, it, you Coverage hear it every Sunday, and the, or every Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, you never throw back across your body. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons is you can get the throw in recession, but the other reason is you're off balance to throw it back across your body. Third down and goal at the seven-yard line. Fairmont trails 14-7, 2.46 to go in the first half. Whitehair takes the snap, a design run up the middle, and he's hit at the six-yard line and goes down, number and the Polar Bears are in trouble Whitehair now. Ball carrier. Tackle made by number 48, Jackson Damron. Going to try a field goal here, trailing 14-7 with 2.30 to go. Cam Peschel has attempted two field goals this season. He's 0 for 2. Now this is extra point distance, but he has a sharp angle to his right. 
The ball is going to be set down on the 13. It'll be a 23-yard attempt. Good snap. The ball is down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So Cam Pesho gets his first ever field goal. Timeout on the field, 2.05 to go. Second quarter, it's Wayne 14, Fairmont 10 on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. The Polar Bears didn't get what they wanted, but they did get something and now trail 14-10 with 2.01 to go. We're in the second quarter and Wayne is going to get the football back and remember, Wayne is going to get the football to start the second half. So the Polar Bears know they no, got to stop them here. Yeah, we've got it. We definitely got to make some adjustments at halftime. But we're far, 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 far away from panic time. And here is Peschel's kick. It is end over end, but short. It's going to be caught at the 20 yard line, and it's Hayton with it. And Hayton is hit there hard, and he goes down near the 30 yard line. I think that was Canfield come flying down through there. So it's going to be first down and 10 at the 30-yard line for the Pioneers. They have no timeouts left. Let's see how the Polar Bears decide to play this now. They try to sneak one extra possession out of the first half if they can stop Wayne. Well, and that hasn't really happened so far tonight. I'm not going to bet my wife on it, but I'm pretty sure you're going to see runs. <laughs> yeah, I think we're safe to say that. Yeah. And here is the quarterback and a handoff yeah. to the nice. fullback, and Damron is hit, and but he just carries defenders with him, and he gets it up to the 36-yard line. He was stopped for no gain. Then he was stopped for maybe a yard gain. And then he took it all the way up. They're giving him five, and it's second and five from there. Yeah, that's like the old, you know, just a downplay dive with the fullback. That's the best we've, we've defended it. But uh, I tell you what, the, the Wayne backs are running hard tonight, Jeff. Polar Bears have been in place a few <coughs> times to make plays, but haven't been able to finish. And now it's second and five for the Pioneers at their own 35-yard line. Here is Damron again. And he just dives forward and takes it up to about the 39-yard line. Hours and Whitehair in on the tackle for the Polar Bears. Going to be about a yard short of the first down. And the clock turns inside one minute to go. Yeah, just, they're just running over and over again. Hey, Wayne perfectly, don't break it. Yes, Wayne is perfectly content to go to the locker room with a 14-10 lead, especially knowing they will get the football first to start the second half. Third down and a yard to go at their own 39-yard line. Quarterback comes up under center now. And there's a sneak, and he'll get the first down as he takes the football over the 40 to about the 42-yard line. Three-yard gain for Fisher, 12, Fisher Fry. Fry and Wayne has its 11th first down, first down of the first half. Yeah, we're just... Uh, we're just a, we're getting worked out up front. The Pioneers do not have to run another play as the play clock is trailing the game clock, and they won't. And the first half is going to come to an end from East West Stadium in Fairmont, where the Polar Bears have some work to do. The score at the half, the Wayne Pioneers 14, the Fairmont Polar Bears 10, and the halftime report coming up next on Fun 93-1. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. 
Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that golden boot pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia, and when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. It's halftime at East West Stadium in Fairmont. The Polar Bears in an unfamiliar spot, trailing 14 to 10 to the Wayne Pioneers. First off, JL, I think we need to acknowledge that this Wayne team is a pretty, pretty solid football team. Oh, yes, but by no means, they, they're very solid. You know, again, them being a 15 seed. Ladies and gentlemen. You know, they, the four losses they have were against really good opponents. And they were, I think the most was like 10 points. So it was almost like they, they lost four games all within like one possession. So, and their coach, you know, Tommy's been down there for 27 years. They've been in the system since they started playing football when they were little kids. I mean, it's a sound football team. And, and the tough kids coming out of one. I mean, again, they may not have speed. They got tough kids. So far, the first half, offensively, they're putting a hat on the hat and positioning themselves and running their feet. We have not been able to do that often. Okay, you're in the locker room now at halftime, and you certainly have been there in that spot. You've seen this first half. What are the kinds of things you're trying to accomplish? Is it an X and O's thing, or is it a is it more an effort? Thing? It's. I think it's. I hate to. I think it's more of an effort tonight. Um, I'd say about 50-50. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe uh, our kids had a, you know, thinking, hey, two seed, 15 seed. But um, we just haven't performed very well on either side of the ball. You know, us giving up 14 points is one thing, but us only scoring 10, that's almost unheard of from Fairmont Senior in a half. So um, we just need to calm them down in the locker room and, and, and get back on the board and, and show them. Again, offensively, Wayne's only running maybe maybe five different plays. Maybe five. You know, they're running the quarterback counter. They run the trap. They ran the belly, the down. Um, and, and the times they do pass, they're only running, you know, it, it roll out three, uh, roll out two-man routes. So, um, and then us offensively, you know, our two biggest plays was a touchdown that was a tip. And then a, a deep catch here going in late here in the second half, that was a tip. So, um, so our biggest plays have almost been fluke plays, and that's, uh, that's, a, that's concerning when you're a, a Fairmont senior fan. The other thing is the fact that because the Polar Bears have had the problems they've had, Wayne has pretty much had the ball for yeah. two-thirds of the first half. Fairmont has run 21 plays. Wayne has run 31, or 32 rather, and that wears on you, and the Polar Bears haven't been able to get the ball into the hands of their offense unless Wayne scores, or they had that 
first half turnover right after uh, well, just early in the first quarter. So it's been a it's been a, a nightmare for Fairmont because Wayne hasn't come up very often with a big play, but they just run it and run it and run it, and we yeah. can't stop it. Yeah, right. Yeah, right now we can't stop it. We um, they just eat, eat up clock. Even you know our possessions offensively have started almost all midfield. So you know our offense is getting the ball in great field position. It's just our execution's not there tonight. And I'm, it can be fixed, trust me. Fairmont Senior will come out in the second half and play 10 times better than what they played in the first half. Yeah, you mentioned the field position because ordinarily you would think, okay, you're playing Fairmont, which is a high-powered offensive team, and you give them three possessions at midfield on kickoffs. You yeah. would think that's got to be a recipe for disaster, but yet the Polar Bears yeah. have only had ten points out of those three excellent field position yeah. starts. We're just, we're, just uh, we're not playing up to our uh, capabilities so far, Jeff, and I believe that will change in the second half. Even, you know, even, you know, knock on wood, you, you can start be playing defense better, but offensively, you want to get to a, you know, want to get to a, we want to get this into a track meet. This is so much like yeah. watching a Bridgeport game yeah. in that you're, your defense is on the field, on the field, on the yeah. fine, and then finally you get the ball offensively, and it's almost like now we got to do something yeah. because we finally got the ball. And, and see, that's what our, that's what that's coaching staff. That's what we got to tell our kids. Look, when we get the ball back, it's not uh, it's not time. It's not pucker time yet. We we don't need a pucker. We just need to play offensively like we've been playing all year. We're we're fine. You know, ten seven or uh, fourteen ten. Um, you know, it's still a lot of game to play. It's just we do need. I would, I would tell the team right now. Look, defense, you got to come up with three stops the second half. You got to make them punt three times in the second half. If you can get them to punt three times the second half, we'll beat Wayne. So we have the game plan already set up here <laughs> yeah. in the press box, that's for sure. And it is halftime at East West Stadium, and we have the opportunity to listen to the Polar Bear Band down on the field. Music from the Polar Bear Marching Band at the half. And the score at halftime is the Wayne Pioneers 14 and the Polar Bears 10. Back to the field.
That's the Polar Bear Band at halftime. First round playoff action from East West Stadium in Fairmont. It's the Wayne Pioneers 14, the Fairmont Polar Bears 10, and the halftime continues coming up next on Fun 93-1. Gotcha. ESPN scoreboard in men's water polo. Cal 13, USC, the Trojans 12, final score. <clears throat> Thank you. In the second quarter, the Celtics 61, Brooklyn 46. Eleven minutes left in the game. Arizona and Duke are tied at 54 each. In Morgantown, halftime continues at East West Stadium in Fairmont, where the Polar Bears are trailing uh, the Wayne Pioneers by a score of 14 to 10. And the Polar Bears and the Pioneers still in the locker room here. Kickoff temperature 41 degrees tonight. Uh, one of the coolest nights we've had so far this season, but we are in November now. Let's take a look at the first half stats. First downs, the Pioneers have dominated 11. Fairmont has six. Rushing yards, Wayne 173. Fairmont Sr. 60 through the air. The Pioneers have completed two of four passes, 12 yards, one touchdown, one interception. The Polar Bears have completed five of nine, 97 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Total offense. Wayne 185, Fairmont Sr. 157. Leading rusher for the Polar Bears, Dylan Hours, two carries, or I'm sorry, the leading rusher is Brody Whitehair, three carries, 20 yards. Damani Johnson, 19 yards on seven carries. But on the other side, they have three running backs who have more than uh, any Polar Bear rusher. Leading the way is Colton Mathis, 75 yards on 11 carries. Jackson Damron, 9 carries, 51. And the quarterback, Fisher Fry, 8 carries for 47. It's been a penalty-free game. Just one 5-yard penalty called tonight. And this comes on the heels of the Polar Bears having over 100 yards in penalties a week ago in the East-West game. Recapping the scoring. Scoring first, the Pioneers as Colton Mathis ran one in from 38 Last yards out, 238 to go first quarter. Extra point was good, 7-0, but Fairmont responded. Within about a minute, Cannon Dinger caught a deflected pass for a 41-yard TD. Extra point by Cam Pesha was good. Game was tied 7-7, and that's where we stood at the end of one quarter. Second quarter, the Pioneers took the football and uh, took up a lot of time and eventually took it all the way down to the 7, and they threw a 7-yard touchdown pass to take the lead 13-7. The extra point by Estep was good, and Wayne led 14-7. That pass 
by the way, for the Pioneers, came with 4.55 to go in the second quarter, and it went to James Spradlin, who was last year's starting quarterback for the Pioneers. And then the Polar Bears had a chance to drive near the end of the first half, and they took it down to the seven, first and goal from there, but they were stopped and had to kick a field goal. They settled for three points as Cam Peschel kicked his first career field goal, 23-yarder, and the Polar Bears trailed 14-10, to 10, and that is where things stand here at the half, the score. Wayne 14 and Fairmont Senior 10. The winner of tonight's game plays the winner of the Mingo Central Phillip Barber game. And I will give you that score right now. And it is 21-14 at the half. Mingo leading Phillip Barber. Let's check the other AA scores. Winfield having no trouble with Lewis County. It's 43-7 in the second quarter. The Generals on top. Frankfurt and Weir are tied 4-4, or 14-14 rather, at halftime. And Independence leads Roan County 28-13. And the other game, North Marion blowing out Lincoln, no surprise there, 28-0 in the second quarter. What a difference it is. One spot in the standings with the Polar Bears playing Wayne at number two and the Huskies playing Lincoln at number one. Certainly a much uh, different opponent for North up at Husky Field than what the Polar Bears are seeing tonight from this Wayne team. When we come back, it'll be time to get ready for the start of the second half as we are at halftime at East West Stadium with the score, the Wayne Pioneers 14 and the Fairmont Polar Bears 10. Sorry, I forgot the out cue there. Oh, but now you're not now you're comparing me to those two. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right. <laughs> thanks. Okay, that'll be good. Okay, whatever you do is fine with me. Okay, all right, that'll be good. Okay. It's a cold night at East West Stadium, and the scoreboard tonight doesn't warm things up for Polar Bear fans as Fairmont Senior finds itself down 14 to 10 here at the half. But the second half ready to get underway in just a few minutes. And JL, here's my question for you. You had lots of these uh, coaching experiences at halftime. You're in a situation like this. What's your response to the players? Are you... Are you getting on them? Are you encouraging them? What is the psychology behind getting them to come out in the second half and play a better game? They're getting a little bit of both. Um, you know, <clears throat> you know, again, you're, again, you're just talking to high school kids, Jeff. So they're, they're going to get a little bit of both. They're going to get, uh, uh, they're definitely going to get some tough love. But you know, but then you've got to understand, you know, get them back to the earth and and, refo and get them to refocus. You know, we haven't played very well tonight. We can play better. We know we can play better. So, you know, um, like I said earlier, I said three punts. If our defense can hold and get Wayne to punt twice this second half, we'll, we'll win this game. Um, but uh, no, I mean they, they get a little bit of both. They're gonna they, they got they got uh, they got they got read the riot act and and they got and, you know and they then they got told what they've done well what they have done well. I think our pass blocking's been great. Um, you know, maybe we need to call shorter routes. Uh, you, know, you know, quick hitters. Maybe we need to abandon the running game altogether because you know we ran for what 40 yards. So we'll see what happens. You know, so we'll, we'll see here. The most important part of the game is going to be the first four minutes of the second half. You know, you, 
be able to tell if if if, if we woke up. Because it, and and what you're saying, and of course, probably everybody in the stands is thinking the same thing. You're kicking off to Wayne, and the last thing you want is to see them take eight or nine minutes off the clock and drive yeah. the ball down and score. What you would really like to see is a three and out. Yeah. That changes the momentum of the game immediately, and then it's like well, you're, uh, you're the first half didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the best thing that could happen is a three and out. You know. Supporting high school sports all across but if we can get them, you know, Visit say they say they get two or three first downs, and then oh, yeah, that's a that's win. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, defensively we've we've got to get we've got to either cause a turnover or punch them back in the mouth because they they for 24 minutes they punched us. And on the other side, you're the Wayne football team who comes here knowing that Fairmont is a power in Double A. You're playing on their home field and you really maybe don't know what to expect, but you see this first half, and now you have some renewed confidence, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you, if you're a Wayne guy, I mean, those kids, they forgot about the four-hour drive. They drove up here on a school bus. You know, they're wide-eyed. They're excited. So, um, yeah, we just – Mojo. You know, Coach Barr's always talking about Mojo. Well, right now, Mojo's over here with the guys in the whites. Let's just send it over to the, there to the other side. Yeah, Let's need, do that need, in the second need, half. We need it back over there at the Royal Blue. Let's take a look at some of the scores in uh, Class AAA now. We checked out the AA scores and uh, some blowouts here in Class AAA. Cabell Midland leading Musselman 43 to nothing in the second quarter. Musselman in the playoffs with a 4-6 and six record. Morgantown trailing Huntington 28-7 to seven at halftime. Huntington, the favored team, that's a 2-15 matchup as well. Martinsburg, 35. Parkersburg, South, 7. That game is in the second quarter. That's a 3-14 and 14 matchup. Parkersburg is leading Hurricane by the score of 26-7. That is in the second quarter. Oak Hill and Princeton will play tomorrow. Jefferson and Wheeling Park are tied 7-7, and that is at halftime. Spring Mills leads Spring Valley by the score of 14 to 10. That game is also at halftime. Bridgeport on top of George Washington, but it's a tight game, 21-14 at the half. Now we go to class single A. Tucker County beating Midland Trail 32-0 at halftime. Tucker, the number two team in class single A, but they have a 10-0 record. Greenbrier West leading Wirt County 26 to nothing at the half. Wahama on top of Summers County 32-14 at halftime. And our final game in class single A tonight, Tug Valley 28, Tyler 6 at the half. Here at the stadium in Fairmont, the Polar Bears are ready to kick off to the Pioneers with Wayne leading 14 to 10. Kick and Cannon Dinger is going to kick half, off 10, for Fairmont Senior Dinger. to start this game. And here is his kick, high end over end, and it takes the returner back to the 9-yard line. It's taken out over the 10, up to the 15, up to the 20, the 25, the 30, and up to the 45-yard line before a hard hit along the sidelines ends the play. The but that was Hayton, Caden Hayton on the return, a 6-2 sophomore, and Wayne has good field position to start its first second-half drive. The ball is going to be set down at the 40 Wayne in Pioneer territory. From the 40 yard line. So the Pioneers will have it now first down and 10. Officials time at the line of scrimmage. Now they send Wayne back to the huddle. Front line for the Polar Bears now. Four-man front on this. First and ten play for the Pioneers. Handoff goes to the near side. It comes to Mathis. Mathis stringing it out to the 45. He's up to the 50. Fumbles the ball, and the Polar Bears try to fall on it, and it's still loose, and let's see who's got it. The Polar Bears have got it. The Polar Bears have the football at the 39-yard line 
after that fumble on a nice run by Mathis, taking the ball all the way down to the 39. But you could see the ball pop out, and Fairmont's got it. 11.37 to go, third quarter. The Polar Bears get the break they needed now. Down 14-10. Let's see what the blue and white can do. First down 10. White here gives it to Dylan Hours off the right side, out over the 40, the 45, and up to the 48-yard line. He'll get about nine yards on the play. Brought down by number 75, Tanner McMillan. So it's going to be second down and one for Fairmont Senior. There's an injured polar bear player. So the Polar Bears have an injured player down with 11.19 to go here in the third quarter from East West Stadium in Fairmont. The score, Wayne 14, Fairmont 10 on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that Golden Boot pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia. Here's Whitehair giving it to Damani Johnson, wide to the right side, and Johnson takes it inside the 50, Number down eight, to the 45 yard Johnson. line, and it's a polar bear first down. Damani Johnson gets the handoff, takes it off the right side, down to the 44, and it'll be a polar bear first down. Dylan Hours was the player shaken up for Fairmont Senior. He walked off on his own. And Fairmont with the ball in Wayne territory at the 44, first down and 10. Here is Whitehair giving it to Chris Wilson. Wilson up the middle, stopped at the line of scrimmage. 21, Chris Wilson, the ball carrier. Stop on the play was made by the linebacker for the Pioneers, and that was Dante Worrell. Second down and nine yards to go. They'll give Wilson one yard on that carry. Second and nine. The ball at the Pioneer 43. Fairmont trails Wayne 14-10, and Whitehair is back to pass over the middle, and the pass is caught by Denger at the 35. He's at the 30, inside the 25, and is thrown down at about the 25-yard line, and it's a Fairmont first down. A 19-yard pass play from Whitehair to Denger, and the Polar Bears get a first down and have it at the 25-yard line. First down number eight for the Polar Bears. Driving here at the start of the second half. Dylan Hours back in the game for the Polar Bears. And there is the give to Dylan Hours right up the middle. And he crashes into the center of the line and takes it down for about three yards to about the 22-yard line. Center of the line and the defense was a little tough that time for the Pioneers. And it's going to bring up a second down and seven for Fairmont Senior at the Wayne 22. Game clock down to 9.25 to go here in the third quarter. The Polar Bears down 14-10. Jones wide to the right side. Hours behind the quarterback White here on this second and seven play, and Brody's back to pass. To the near side, the pass is caught by Canfield. He has it inside the 15 and down close to the 10. It's a Polar Bear first down. Right here, pass to take to number two, Logan Canfield. Flag on the play. Flag thrown near where Canfield went down at the end of the play. Wait for the referee's call. Appears to be pending against the Polar Bears. So the Polar Bears get the first down, down to the 10 yard line, but a personal foul penalty really hurts the Polar Bears there as they had excellent field position. And that brings the ball back 
to the 25. First down and 10 from there. Did have it down at the 10, so that 15-yard penalty, the first of the night. Pistol formation, White here back to pass, getting pressure, and he throws it to the other side of the field, and Hours can hang on to the ball at about the 28-yard line. White here getting lots of pressure, and the pass to Hours incomplete, and it brings up a second down and 10. Whitehair has thrown for 124 yards tonight. Second and 10 for the Polar Bears now. Two receivers go wide to the right side. Damani Johnson wide to the left, and Whitehair is back to pass. Quick pass comes near side. Hours catches it at the 25. He gets down to the 20, and he's going to be brought down inside the 20 at about the 18-yard line. To get about seven yards on the play, it'll bring up a third down and three. Brought down by number two, Hayton. Third down. So third down, three yards to go for the Polar Bears. At the Wayne 18, Fairmont needs to get it to the 15 for a first down. Dylan Hours comes up under center at quarterback, runs on a quarterback sneak, and Brian, now there's Brian. a flag on the play and a penalty pending against the Polar Bears at the line of scrimmage. That will be a five-yard penalty. All start called against the Polar Bears. Five-yard penalty. Third and three becomes third down and eight. Fairmont Senior had no penalties in the first half, but two here in the second half have come on this all-important drive with Fairmont down 14-10. Third down eight from the Wayne 23. This is four down territory. So the Polar Bears don't need to get it all on this third down. Low snap, Whitehair has to go back and pick it up. He's back at about the 40-yard line, sends it downfield, caught by Canfield at the 15, the 10, the 5. He's into the end zone. That's a Polar Bear touchdown. It's a 23-yard touchdown pass from Whitehair to Canfield, and the Polar Bears take the lead. It's 16 to 14. On to attempt the extra point for Fremont Senior, number 44, Cam Peschel. His holder, number two, Logan Canfield. Peschel comes in to attempt the extra point for the Polar Bears. Canfield to hold. Snap is there, ball down, kick up, and the kick is good, but there are flags thrown on the play. Flags thrown on the play. Let's wait and see if it's going to be something assessed on the kickoff. And it looks like it is. So there's time out on the field with 7.47 to go, third quarter. It's Fairmont 17, Wayne 14 on Fun 93.1. National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Fairmont Senior takes advantage of the Wayne turnover, turns it into a touchdown, and now the Polar Bears have their first lead. It's 17 to 14 with 7.47 to go in the third quarter, and the Polar Bears will have the advantage of a 15-yard penalty called against the Pioneers, roughing the snapper on the extra point attempt, and Cannon Dinger will kick off for the Polar Bears. Dinger kicking from right to left, and here is his kick. High sky kick that's caught at the 10-yard line and taken up to the 15, up to the 
20-yard line and up to about the 23 for the Pioneers. That was Caden Payton on the kickoff return. Canfield on the tackle for the Polar Bears. First down coming up for the Pioneers. All at the 23-yard line. 7.41 on the clock, and the Polar Bears leading 17-14. In case you're wondering, J.L. Lambert's absence, he has a grandchild on the way, and so he took off just a little bit ago. So going solo now here in the second half, the Polar Bears with a 17-14 lead, and the Pioneers come out first down and 10. Quarterback. Hands it off, and it's taken by Jackson Dameron, and he is nailed at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard, but the Polar Bears much better defensively on that play. Just a one-yard gain for Dameron. That was Caleb Arbogast on the tackle. Jackson Dameron has gained 52 yards tonight. That's his first carry of the second half. Wayne taking lots of time in the huddle. They come to the play clock with 11 seconds. And it's second down and nine from their own 24. Quarterback up under center now. That's Fisher Fry. And Fry on a quarterback keeper. This time he's wrapped up and brought down. But he still manages to take defenders with him. And he'll get about three yards, maybe four on the play. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he just kept carrying defenders with him, and he ends up taking it up to the 29-yard line, and it's going to be third down and about four yards to go. So a big third down play now. Pioneers have the ball. They haven't been stopped yet tonight on downs, and they haven't punted. They've had a couple of turnovers, and that's it. Third down, four yards to go. Handoff comes wide to the left side. It comes to Mathis. He's grabbed in the backfield. He's going down. Big loss on the play. And the Polar Bears bring him down at about the 23-yard line. And now flags are down, and that's going to be a penalty coming up against Fairmont Senior. The Polar Bears were so excited about making the big play that that enthusiasm got the best of them, and we'll see. But a face mask is called against the Polar Bears. If it's not a personal foul, it's just five yards. But they are marking, the one official's marking 15 yards off, and I think the other official called it just a five-yard penalty. I didn't see a personal foul sign but that's where they're marking the ball down. They're calling it a personal foul face mask against Fairmont Senior. Now, wait a minute. Now the official's taking the ball back. And now he's stepping off five yards. There's total confusion down on the field with the official who's marking the penalty off against Fairmont Senior. And now they set the ball down at the 27. It was just a five yard penalty against the Polar Bears. The downside of that is they get to run another play, so what would have been a fourth down is now third down and about seven. So it would have been a loss back to the 22-yard line. Now it's third down and seven. The ball at the 27-yard line, and here's the quarterback handing the ball up the middle, and there goes Damron. He's inside the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5, and he's into the end zone for the Wayne touchdown. A deceptive play by the quarterback Fisher Fry as he quickly gave it to Damron, then looked as though he was going to pass, but he didn't have the ball. And Damron takes it in for the touchdowns, and the Polar Bears Face mask penalty comes back to bite them hard. They would have had the ball back had it not been for that five-yard penalty and another opportunity for Wayne to run a play. Extra point attempt coming up now for Estep as Wayne has taken a 20-17 to 17 lead. The ball is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. 
Timeout on the field, 5.21 to go, third quarter from Fairmont. It's Wayne 21, Fairmont Senior 17 on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, home-style food and great value go hand-in-hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. A 73-yard run by Jackson Damron has given Wayne a 21-17 lead. And it was all because of a five-yard face mask penalty. It would have been fourth down and about 17 for the Pioneers. But that five-yard penalty gave Wayne an extra chance. It then was third down and long, and they took advantage and scored. Now... The kick will go from left to right, end over end, short, and Hours takes it at the 19. Comes up to the 20, to the outside at the 25, the 30, and over the 30, up close to the 35-yard line. And that's where the Polar Bears will Number go five, with their Hours second drive of the second half. Their first one resulted in a go-ahead touchdown, but now they find themselves behind again at 21-17. to 17. The winner of this game tonight, We'll play the winner of the Mingo Central Philip Barber game. That game is in the third quarter, and Mingo is leading 21 14. First down, 10 Polar Bears from their own 35. 5 13 on the clock. Pistol formation, Whitehair with hours behind him. Whitehair takes the snap. He wants to pass. He's looking, looking. Now chased out of the pocket, runs to the far side of the field, gets rid of it over the middle, and it's incomplete. In the area of Canfield, he leaped into the air but couldn't bring it down, and it's second down and 10, and we have players hurt on the play. One of them, Polar Bear quarterback Brody Whitehair, and the other is a Wayne player. So we have a timeout on the field now. 5.01 to go in the third quarter from East West Stadium. The score, Wayne 21, Fairmont Senior 17 on Fun 93.1. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that golden blue pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Give me one more 30. Here's Dylan Hours running with the football, gets out over the 20, the 25, and up to the 30-yard line. And that's going to be short of the first down. Brody Whitehair, the polar bear quarterback, was shaken up on the play and limped to the sidelines. 
And the Polar Bears now going with Dylan Hours at quarterback. And it's going to be third down for the Polar Bears and about 14 yards to go. Third down and 14. Hours at quarterback. And there's a fake and a keeper by Hours. He gets out to the 40 and over the 40 to the 41. And the ball pops loose. And let's see, Wayne says they've got it. Wait for the officials to signal, and they do. Wayne's got the football. So Dylan Hours fumbles at the 41-yard line, and Fairmont looking at all kinds of negatives right now. Their starting quarterback is out. They've just turned the ball over in their own territory. They're down 21-17. And Wayne will have the football with 4-12 to go in the third quarter at the Fairmont 40. So the Pioneers come to the line of scrimmage now, first down and 10 with all of the momentum. First down and 10 play, handoff goes off the right side and that's Mathis running hard and Mathis takes it inside the 35 and down to the 33. He's going to get seven yards on the play. Number 57, Caleb Angelon. Seven-yard gain. The Polar Bears already playing without Gavin Michael. And now Brody White here, of course, had been playing defensively as well. And he is out. And there is the handoff again to Mathis. Mathis fighting his way up the middle, and he'll get the first down, and he just won't go down. And he loses the ball, and the Polar Bears have it, but the officials are claiming he was down. 17, Mathis, the ball carrier. From the 33 down first to the 22, down, it'll be an 11-yard gain. And another first down for the Pioneers. Things looking negative for the Polar Bears right now. From the 22, quarterback on a keeper off the left side, and he runs hard, and he takes the football inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line. 12, the ball carrier. He's going to get about five yards on the play, and it's going to bring up a second down and five. Damron has run for 125 yards tonight. Mathis 93 and Fry 52. Second down and five from the Fairmont 17. And there is Mathis again. This time Mathis is hit at the line of scrimmage and he's going down. 17, the ball carrier, Colton Mathis. So it'll bring up a third down and five for the Pioneers. No gain on that play. And there have been very few of those for Fairmont Senior tonight. The clock down to 2.20. We're in the third quarter from Fairmont with the number two Polar Bears on the ropes here, trailing 21-17 to the Pioneers. Third down play. Remember, Wayne is in four down territory, though. Quarterback Fry under center, and he's back to pass. Sets up, lofts one downfield into the end zone, and the pass is incomplete. The receiver in the back of the end zone couldn't hold on to the ball. That was intended for... Hayton, Damani Johnson Hayton defending on the play for the Polar Bears, and it's fourth down and five for the Pioneers. Brings up a fourth down for Wayne. They've only thrown five passes, attempted five, completed two, one intercepted, also one thrown for a touchdown. So now it's fourth down and five, and the Polar Bear defense up front, Richmond, Arbogast, and Bigelow needs to dig in. And also Bracero, four-man front for the Polar Bears. Fourth down and five. Fry up under center. Fry gives it off the side to Mathis. Mathis laterally is going to be stopped. No gain, and the Polar Bears will take over. Mathis, the ball Brought down by number two, Logan Canfield. Canfield makes the stop for the Polar Bears. A gain of a yard, but he needed five, and the Polar Bears get the ball with a minute 51 to go in the third quarter. Go, 
Brody Whitehair has returned as the Polar Bear quarterback now. First down play, deep in Fairmont territory. Whitehair back to pass, sends it downfield. The pass is caught by Navon Jones for a first down over the 30-yard line. Pass complete to number 11, Navon Jones. And it's a Fairmont first down. From the 16 up to the 31, it'll be a 15-yard pass play. First down. Brody Whitehair's had a few times this season when he's gone down, but always manages to get back up. First down and 10 at the 31. Handoff goes to Dylan Hours. Hours trying to get outside to the right. He gets up to the 35, up to the 40-yard line, and he has enough for a polar bear first down all the way up to about the 43. So get about 12 yards on the play and a polar bear first down. First down. At the 44-yard line now, a minute 17, turning clock, third quarter, Wayne 21, Fairmont Senior 17. The Polar Bears with the ball, moving from right to left. Low snap, white hair controls, he's back to pass, looks over the middle, and the pass in traffic is thrown, and it is ruled complete, complete to Damani Johnson at the 41-yard line. Johnson. 15-yard pass play. He's over the play. Polar Bear, first down. And the Polar Bears keep the drive going with another first down. The ball at the 42 in Wayne territory. And there is the handoff up the middle taken by Hours. He breaks it to the outside. He's at the 35, spins away, and gets down close to the 31-yard line. Number it's another Polar Bear first down on an 11-yard run. Result of the play, Polar Bear, first down. Fairmont on the move with 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Polar Bears trail 21-17. Fairmont has two receivers wide to the left, two to the right. Chris Wilson behind the quarterback right here now on this first down play. Brody back to pass, chased around in the pocket, now getting pressure, runs to the far side of the field, fires towards the sidelines and throws it out of bounds. Incomplete. It'll bring up a second down and 10. Couldn't find a receiver open that time, and an incomplete pass makes it second down and 10 with 19 seconds left in the third quarter. Wayne 21, Fairmont 17. The Polar Bears have led once in this game, and that was 17 to 14 early in the third quarter. Now it's second and 10, the ball on the 30 in Wayne territory. There's the toss coming back to Navon Jones. Jones in trouble, stiff arms the defender and he goes down behind the line of scrimmage and a flag is thrown on the play. Flag thrown on the play, 12 seconds showing on the third quarter clock. Penalty appears to be pending against the Polar Bears, and they decide whether they want to take the play, which was a loss, or take a penalty. And it appears they're going to go with the penalty, <clears throat> which will take the ball back to the 40-yard line. They called a legal formation against the Polar Bears and then a block in the back. They will take the block in the back penalty against Fairmont Senior, and that takes the ball back to the 40. And the Polar Bears will be looking at a second down and 20. So 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. Fairmont second down, 20 yards to go from the Wayne 40-yard line. The Polar Bears trail 21-17. The game clock has started to turn, and the Polar Bears may not get this play off. And they will not as time has run out. At the end of the third quarter from East West Stadium in Fairmont, the score, the Wayne Pioneers 21, the Fairmont Polar Bears 17 on Fun 93-1. 
Liberty National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. <sighs> In the third quarter, North Marion 28, Lincoln 7. Independence 41, Roan County 14, that's in the third. Weir 17, Frankfurt 14 in the fourth. Winfield 50, Lewis County 14 in the third. Philip Barber, Mango Central 21-21 in the third. Tomorrow at four o'clock, East Fairmont hosts Herbert Hoover. Ready for the fourth quarter. The Polar Bears trailing Wayne 21-17. Have the ball in Pioneer territory at the 40. After that 10-yard penalty now, it's second down and 20. So that means the Polar Bears need to get to the Wayne 20 for a first down. Brody White here out of the pistol formation is back to pass. Downfield the pass from Avon Jones. He's got it inside the 20. It's a Polar Bear first down. And there was a swing. One of the Wayne players took a swing at Navon Jones, and the officials didn't see it. Ball set down at the 20. Now the officials are checking the sticks on the far side. So we'll see where they're going to mark the ball down and whether or not it is a first down. And now they signal it is a first down. It's got to be. The ball is on the 20-yard line. So it's a 20-yard pass. And a polar bear first down. First, now they, first down and 10 at the 20. Here is ours running with the football off the left side. The 15 down to the 10, down to the 5. He's into the end zone. That's a polar bear touchdown. Dylan Hours takes it in from 20 yards out, and the Polar Bears take the lead again. It's 23-21. On to attempt the extra point for Fairmont Senior, number 44, Cam Peschel. His holder, number two, Logan Canfield. Here is Peschel now to attempt the extra point for Fairmont. Ball down, kick up, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field, 11.40 to go in the fourth quarter. It's the Polar Bears 23, Wayne 21 on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name's Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. The West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission promotes athletics that provide lifelong and life quality learning experiences to high school students while enriching their achievement. The Polar Bears have taken a three point lead. 11.40 to go in the fourth together. quarter. The return of Brody White here and the running of Dylan Hours. And Fairmont now leads 24 21. And a 15 yard penalty called against Wayne on that extra point. Second time that's happened to the Pioneers. And the Polar Bears kicking off from the Wayne 45. Peschel, high end over end kick, and it is taken at the goal line. Taken out to the 5, up to the 10, up to the 15, up to the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40. One man after him, down inside the 40, and Peschel can't get him, but he's brought down from behind by Dakota Nisley at the 23-yard line. 
Jared Carey on the kickoff return. There are no flags on the play and a special teams letdown as Fairmont was kicking off from the Wayne 45 and couldn't get the ball in the end zone on the kickoff and the Pioneers return it. And now are in business at the Polar Bear 22 yard line, first and 10. Wayne comes out of the huddle now. Wing back to the right side, wing T formation. Fry on a keeper off the left side, and he ducks inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. Canfield hit him first. He'll get about four yards on the play, and it'll be second down and six. Sixty-one yards rushing for Fry. Ball set down at the 18. Second and six for the Pioneers. The Polar Bears have had very few zero or negative yard plays against Wayne tonight. Quarterback Fry gives it off to Damron. Damron off the right side will take it close to the first down marker on the far side. So he takes it down inside the 15, down to about the 13 yard line. Third down for Wayne. Going to be short of it by about a yard. Five yard gain for Damron. 130 rushing yards for Jackson Dameron, a 5'11", 220-pound senior. Now the Polar Bears need a big stop. Third down and short. Quarterback up under center. Quarterback gives it to Dameron off the left side, and he dives down to the 15-yard line, or to the 10-yard line, rather, and he gets the first down. On the ball carrier, first down, Wayne. So first down, goal to go for the Pioneers at the 10. 10.08, turning clock, fourth quarter, Fairmont 24, Wayne 21. But the Pioneers trying to answer that polar bear touchdown and answer it quickly. East step goes wide to the right side. Fry under center, gives it off to Dameron off the right side, and he is tackled inside the 10 at about the 8 by Canfield. Get a yard, maybe two on the play. It'll be second down and goal from the 8-yard line. Polar Bears have faced a lot of adversity tonight. But they cling to a three-point lead now, 24-21. East step goes wide right. Quarterback Fry comes up under center. Fry fakes it, now keeps it off the left side. Fry trying to cut the corner on the left down to the five and grab from behind, and it'll be a horse collar tackle called against the Polar Bears. He took the ball down to the four-yard line. Remember, it was second and goal from the nine. But there's going to be a penalty called against Fairmont Senior. So they get to run the play again. Half the distance to the goal line. Takes the ball down to the two. So he took it to the four, which was a five-yard gain. And then... A two-yard penalty against the Polar Bears. Second and goal from the two. Fry comes up under center. Wing T gives it to Damron right up the middle, and Damron is going to be stopped at about the one-yard line. And it'll be third down and goal to go for the Pioneers. So the ball resting at the one, 8.50, turning clock, fourth quarter. Fairmont Senior 24, Wayne 21. Front line for the Polar Bears. Richmond Arbogast. Dylan Hours up on the front line, and this time the handoff goes to Mathis. He is hit and knocked down short of the goal line, and it's going to bring up a fourth down and goal to go. Now the official signal touchdown. So a late call by the officials. They signal touchdown, and Wayne has taken the lead. It's 27-24. It'll be a one-yard run for Mathis. And it was the kickoff return that killed the Polar Bears on, on that particular drive. Zero, Kate Eastep. 
Jared Perry returning the kickoff from the goal line all the way down into polar bear territory at the 22, movement at the line of scrimmage. False start called against the Pioneers, five yard penalty. There have been a couple of kicks from the kicker tonight that if it had been five more yards, he might not have made the extra point. So now he'll try again as they take the ball back to the eight. Kicking from the 15, East step, ball down, the kick is no good. And there's timeout on the field with 8.23 to go. In the fourth quarter from Fairmont, it's Wayne 27, Fairmont Senior 24 on Fun 93-1. City National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. 23, Frankfurt, 21. <clears throat> Independence leads Rune County, 48, 21, also in the third. Tomorrow, Nitro is at Scott. Wayne has rallied now to take a 27-24 lead with 8.23 to go in the game, and the Pioneers are going to kick off. East step kicking off from right to left with the ball teed up in the center of the field. And there's a high end over end kick that is going to be taken and bobbled. Damani Johnson has it at the 23. And the ball is taken out over the 25. About the 28, it was Canfield who ended up with the ball. Up to about the 32 yard line. And that's where the Polar Bears will go first down and 10. So you compare those two situations, Fairmont kicking off from, this was the crazy thing, from the 45-yard line in Wayne territory. The ball didn't go into the end zone, and Wayne returned it all the way down to the Polar Bear 28. First down 10 from the 33. Here's Whitehair giving it off to Dylan Hours off the left side. Hours out over the 35, the 40, and going to be brought down right at about the 40-yard line. We'll get about... Six, maybe seven yards on the play, and it'll bring up a second down for the Polar Bears. Brought down by number five, Justin. Gain Bears. of seven, second down and three. Gain of seven, second and three for the Bears. Ball up at the 39-yard line. Whiteouts to the left and right, running back. Hours behind White here. Hours gets the ball off the left side. Hours gets back to the line of scrimmage and Moore gets up to the 50, gets the first down. Number five, Dylan Hours, the ball carrier. A 10 yard gain for Dylan Hours and the Polar Bears get another first down. They're going to set the football down at the 50. And there is a timeout called. Timeout called, 7.38 to go in the fourth quarter from East West Stadium in Fairmont. The score, the Wayne Pioneers 27, the Fairmont Polar Bears 24 on Fun 93.1. Hi, my name's Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Final score for Morgantown, Mobbin, 73, West Virginia, 65. Seven minutes and 38 seconds to go in this first round double-A playoff game. The Polar Bears trailing Wayne 27-24. Fairmont has the ball at midfield, though. First down and 10. Three receivers to the right side. Quarterback White here has Dylan Hours, the running back beside him. First down and 10 from the 50, and Whitehair is back to pass. 
has lots of time. Now throws to the near side for Canfield. A diving catch is ruled incomplete. So it'll be a second down and 10. They say Canfield didn't catch it. He went diving to the Pass turf. Came up with the ball, but the Canfield. official said he trapped it. Wouldn't have been a big gain anyway, about three or four yards. So second down and 10. Brody Whitehair has thrown for 204 yards tonight for the Polar Bears. It's second and 10 from the 50. Whitehair out of the pistol formation. He gives it to Dylan Hours off the left side, down to the 45, the 40, the 35, and the ball pops loose, and the Pioneers have recovered inside the 20 yard line. Fumble on the play. Recovered by Wayne. A long run by Dylan Hours, which seemed to be setting up the Polar Bears in business, followed by a fumble, and the Pioneers take over inside the 20 yard line at the 15. start first and 10 from the 15-yard line. So with 7.19 to go on the clock now, the Polar Bear defense needs a stop as Fairmont trails 27-24. Another Polar Bear turnover. That is Fairmont's third fumble of the night. They've lost all three. Here comes Wayne now from its own 15-yard line. In motion, the wing back. Handoff goes right up the middle to Dameron, and Dameron crashes into the center of the line and gets about three yards on the play. Up to about the 18-yard line. Second down and seven. The Pioneers take lots of time to get the play in from the sidelines, and the quarterback gets it from the sidelines, then trots in, and he has to go all the way to the other side of the field. They come to the line of scrimmage with seven seconds on the play clock. Second down and seven, and there's the quarterback on a keeper. Trying to cut the corner at the 20, and he's brought down. Beautiful tackle. Nice defensive play made by the Polar Bears. Tavion Thornton. It's going to bring up a third down Brings and about six yards to go. Lane. So a big third down play here for the Pioneers. The clock shows 6.09. We're in the fourth quarter. Wayne leads 27-24. They have the ball at the 20. They need to take it to the 25 for a first down. Quarterback Fry comes up under center. Fry gives it wide to the left to Staley. Staley runs towards the sidelines, and he's going to be brought down for no gain on the play. Maybe a yard, but it's going to be a fourth down putting situation for the Pioneers. Fourth down. Two-yard gain, and we're going to see the first punt of the night for either team. The ball is at the 21-yard line in Wayne territory. They'll punt from right to left. They're rushing a player off late. Fry is the punter. And he's going to fake it, sends it downfield. It is caught at the 33-yard line, taken to the 40 and up to the 45. Caught by Staley, and the Pioneers run a fake punt and get a first down, but... There's a flag down on the play at the line of scrimmage, and this might be coming back. Flag on the play. False start is the call against Wayne. So the fake punt nullified, and the Pioneers will have to punt again or will line up in punt formation again as the ball is going to be taken down to the 16-yard line. Gutsy call by Tom Harmon, though. You don't get that, and the Polar Bears are knocking on the door. The quarterback, Fry, is the putter. Now he stands back at his five-yard line. 
Good snap, and there's another flag on the play. Another false start called against the Pioneers, and that's going to take the football back to the 11-yard line. And that's going to put the putter back at his goal line, and to return for the Polar Bears is Dylan Hours. Does he have one more of those big plays in him? High snap, and Fry brings it down and punts it away, line drive, and... Hours lets it go out of bounds, and the Polar Bears will have the football in uh, Wayne territory at about the 40-yard line. After the kick, Senior will take over. So the Polar Bears have the ball at the Wayne 40. Four minutes, 37 seconds to go in the game. The last time the Polar Bears had the ball, they drove down to the 15, but a fumble by Dylan Hours turned the ball over. But Fairmont Senior gets the football back. They need to put together a drive now with 4.37 on the clock. Plenty of time considering the position the Polar Bears are in on the field now, though. Pistol formation. Hours behind Whitehair. And there is Dylan Hours carrying the football off the left side to the 45 and down, run out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Going to be enough for a Polar Bear first down. An 11-yard gain for Hours. First down, Fairmont Senior. Ball set down at the 28. Stop clock, 4.31 to go. It's Wayne 27, Fairmont Senior 24. The winner advances to face the Mingo Philip Barber winner. The loser is done at the 28. First down and 10. Whitehair gives it off to Damani Johnson off the left side. He gets down to the 25 and then is tackled out of bounds along the sidelines, and no flag is thrown. Number eight, Damani Johnson, the ball carrier. Three-yard gain for Johnson on that play. You can see the tackle was made about five yards beyond the sidelines. So second down and seven coming up for the Polar Bears now. The ball at the 25-yard line. Hours back in the game, and Whitehair back to pass down the far sidelines. The pass is caught by Johnson. It's a polar bear touchdown. Brody Whitehair to Damani Johnson, a 25-yard TD pass, and the polar bears have taken the lead again. It's 30 to 27. Extra point attempt now by Cam Peschel. Canfield to hold. Ball down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Time out on the field. 4-19 to go in the fourth quarter. It's Fairmont Senior 31, Wayne 27 on Fun 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Fairmont Senior has taken the lead again, 31-27 with 4.19 to go, but the Polar Bears have to kick off, and the kickoff was the down side of the last Polar Bear touchdown, and here is Dinger kicking this time end over end to the far side, and Perry gets it and drops it at the 15-yard line, then cuts up field, gets to the 20, but he's not going any farther than that as he's gang-tackled there, and that's where the Pioneers will start this drive with 4.12 to go in the game. So the Pioneers will start at their own 20. Four minutes and 12 seconds on the clock. 
The Polar Bears hold a four point lead, 31 27. Wayne has two timeouts left. Fairmont has all three of its timeouts. Pioneers come up to the line of scrimmage at the 20. First down and 10. Handoff comes to Dameron. Dameron ducks his head and takes it up to about the 23-yard line. He'll get three on the play. It'll be second and seven. 48, Dameron, the ball carrier. He's run for 140 yards tonight. He's been a real handful for the Polar Bears. Second and seven for the Pioneers. Quarterback jogs in from the sidelines with the play from Coach Tom Harmon, who's in his 27th year at Wayne. He's won three state titles and 72% of his games. Second and seven from the 23. Fry under center. Caton goes in motion, handoff goes to uh, the wing back off the left side who gets up to about the 29 yard line and his gang tackled there. He'll get about six yards on the play but it will bring up a third down and one. And the clock turns down to 3.10 to go. Number two, third and one for the Pioneers and we're going to turn inside three minutes before they run this play. And they have the ball in their own territory at the 29. Fairmont leads 31-27. Quarterback up under center. Handoff goes to Mathis off the right side. And uh-oh, there he goes. Out over the 40, the 50, down the sidelines at the 40. Runs towards the 15, or the 20 rather, and is brought down there with 2.44 to go. A big play on third and one. And Mathis has taken it all the way into Polar Bear territory at the 20. And the Polar Bears clinging to a four-point lead. A 51-yard run by Mathis. And now the Pioneers are in business. Now the clock doesn't make a difference. First down and 10 at the Polar Bear 20-yard line. Wing, a right formation, quarterback on a keeper off the left side. This time the quarterback is going to be hit, and he's going to be dropped for a loss on the play back at about the 25-yard line. That was Trevor Bigelow with a big defensive play. Five-yard loss for the quarterback, Fry. And now timeout called by Wayne. They have one left. Timeout Pioneers, 2.07 to go, fourth quarter. It's Fairmont 31, Wayne 27 on Fun 93-1. Hi, my name's Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of boo pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Wayne has the football at the Polar Bear 25 with 2.07 to go. They trail Fairmont 31-27. It's second and 16. They need to take the ball down to the nine for a first down. So we'll see how the Pioneers decide to play it now. They've got two downs to get 16 yards. Quarterback Fry comes up under center. Wingback comes in motion. Handoff goes to the big fullback Dameron right up the middle, and he runs inside the 20 down to about the 18-yard line. Right down by number eight, Damani Johnson. And a big gain. He's going to get about eight yards on the play, and it's going to be third down and about eight. Brings up a third down for Wayne. So an eight-yard gain. And it's third down and eight. From the 18-yard line, quarterback Fry back to pass, sets up, fires downfield, and it's intercepted! Dinger has it at the 20, to the 25, the 30, down the sidelines, his run towards the 35, and out of bounds, 125 to go, and Cannon Dinger has come up with the interception. 
and the Polar Bears have the ball with a minute 25 to go. Dinger with his second interception of the game and his eighth interception of the season and the Polar Bears are a minute 25 away from advancing. The ball is at the 37. Wayne has just one timeout left. So the Polar Bears don't really need to even do anything but take a knee. Cannon Dinger has had so many big plays for the Polar Bears, and that one, well, that might be the biggest, well, that is the biggest one of the season. There's no question, as Wayne was driving, threatening, they were looking at a third down and eight. Fry went back to pass, threw it towards the center of the field, and Cannon Dinger came away with the ball. And now the Polar Bears have it. First down and 10 at their own 37 with a minute 25 to go, and the Pioneers have just one timeout left. And the Polar Bears are just going to take a knee. Whitehair takes the snap and takes a knee. Wayne has one timeout left. And now the Pioneers decide to call it. So timeout Wayne, 118 left in the game from East West Stadium in Fairmont. It's the Polar Bears 31, Wayne 27 on Fun 93-1. Second down and 11 for the Polar Bears, and Whitehair takes a, will take a knee again once the ball is snapped as the Polar Bears are in that victory formation. With just a minute, eight. And Whitehair has taken the knee now, and the Polar Bears will watch the clock run down. Inside one minute to go. Wayne has no timeouts left. And the Polar Bears are looking at a third down and 11. White hair up under center. He'll watch the play clock. It's now at 10. Takes the snap, takes the knee, and that will do it. The Polar Bears do not have to run another play. And can you believe it? Cannon Dinger's interception has resuscitated the Polar Bears, and Fairmont Senior will advance to the second round of the Class AA playoffs against a very underrated Wayne team who came to town here tonight and almost pulled off the upset of the season. It's a final tonight from East West Stadium in Fairmont. The Fairmont Senior Polar Bears 31 and the Wayne Pioneers 27. The wrap up coming up next on Fun 93-1. The Polar Bear family wants you Yeah, I need two minutes right now. Please help keep our students safe and have a good evening. We want to see your fans are reminded that West Fairmont will be back in action next weekend in the second round of the playoffs here at East West Stadium. Time and date to be announced. <laughs>
There were moments in this football game tonight where if you were a polar bear fan, things looked very bleak. And one of those was the time where the polar bears lost their quarterback, Brody Whitehair, who had to limp off the field. It really looked like that might be the night for him. But sure enough, he was able to come back and help orchestrate the polar bears down the field and into the end zone two times after that to give the polar bears the 31 to 27 victory over a Wayne team that, I'll tell you, their final record is going to be 6-5, and five, but this is one of the very best teams the Polar Bears have played all season. They just were a very rugged team up front, and they just ran the ball better than really anybody has against the Polar Bears this season. But Fairmont Senior was able to claw its way back, and there were a couple of times where it looked as though the Polar Bears had made the comeback, and then sure enough, Wayne answered, and you had to come up with another comeback, and they were able to do so. When we come back, it'll be time to talk about our Elevate Player of the Game, our Elevate Physical Therapy Player of the Game. That's coming up next as we're here at East West Stadium where it's all over, and again, the final score, Fairmont 31, Wayne 27 on Fun 93-1. Hey, uh, Luis, after, after we do this break, when you play the Elevate spot, then you can come back to me and we'll be done, okay? Good? 